When we rely on open intelligence for short moments many times and we begin to allow data to be as it is, all the, the data, the thoughts, the sensations, the emotions, all the experience, we begin to have mastery over all of our data, over all the points of view. Initially, it's more like when we're relying on these short moments, the data that appear in our mind stream are great reminders to practice open intelligence, especially things that we could call afflictive. Um, maybe anger, hatred, frustration, worry about big decisions we need to make. These are all powerful reminders to continue our practice, to enliven our practice of short moments, of allowing data to be as it is. Um, it's also good to acknowledge the downsides of only continuing to emphasize data. If we continue to indulge, you know, stories come up about decisions and we just keep indulging in the stories, playing them over and over again, it just creates more worry, confusion, and tension. And, you know, I was really fed up with that way of living. I didn't want to live just a fear-based life anymore. It just didn't seem appropriate. And I was fed up with it, so I did everything in my power to find ways to not be at the whim of, of data. So the downsides are, it comes so clear to us. If we indulge or if we avoid, like if you avoid negativity, at some point it's going to come up. Or if you continue to replace negative thoughts with positive thoughts, at some point that strategy isn't going to work any longer. And I, many people come to a point of realizing that their strategies and antidotes for cultivating positive and getting rid of negative, they, they're just not sustainable. They may bring temporary relief and, you know, you put it off to the next day and the next day. And, but at some point you, we realize that, you know, this isn't sustainable. This isn't really empowering all of that, all of the data that I experience, even the negative. Only having positive thoughts, emotions, sensations, it's a very difficult space to get into. And it's actually, it's not really required. It's not required. It's not the practice and balance view to cultivate positive. It's an allowing all data, positive, negative, and neutral, to be as they are, to really instinctively recognize that they're inseparable from great benefit. They, they have no independent nature of their own. There's no positive essence greater than this negative essence. It's all this dynamic, beneficial energy of open intelligence, and we prove that to ourselves in short moments repeated many times. So it's not something we need to trick ourselves into believing and participating in the Four Mainstays of Balance who doesn't sculpt us into some identity-less one being. It's just uniqueness, it's freshness, it's empowerment, it's um, everybody being able to contribute their gifts, strengths, and talents to the benefit of all. So really recognizing the downsides of continuing on with a term called reification, just continuing to give the descriptions meaning and seeing that that doesn't serve us anymore, we're more motivated to rely on open intelligence or take part in the four mainstays of balance view. We see people around us in the community who have been practicing allowing data to be as it is, where open intelligence becomes more and more obvious as the, the only intelligence that's operating, we see um, powerful role models of people who have been allowing things like anger, desire, frustration, hatred, uh, any topic you could consider, allowing that to be as it is and seeing that there, there is mastery of all data. That is an option for all of us as humans. And having mastery of data simply means that you could be experiencing anything and it doesn't stop you from showing up, upholding commitments, and living with great cheer and contributing. I mean, that it sounded a bit outrageous in the beginning for me, so I just was, at least I was interested and open. So I had many questions that were hypothetical, theoretical, analytical. How do I... How do I get rid of this obsessive-compulsive behavior to always show up 
early, like when I go to the airport, I consider well, maybe I'll go an hour early and I'd get to the airport an hour early and I'd be so stressed and worried that I'd miss my flight. So then I would go an hour and a half early. Same thing, completely stressed and worried that I was going to miss my flight. So I showed up two hours early and then you see this, it's just ongoing and um, being wrapped up in data, you know, you could, if you're just focused on that, then you're, you know, things come up like you snap at people or you get really angry or you, you know, your focus just narrows down and <clears throat> maybe you're unsafe in your actions and so you just, again, just another demonstration of the limitations of only focusing on data. So now when I go to the airport, I still probably have all those same thoughts come up. Oh my God, what if there's a traffic jam or the security line is really long and you never know what's going to happen. Like sometimes in the London airport in Heathrow, it's like the lines are just so long and other times there's nobody there. It's, you just never know. So to have mastery of the data and, and that circumstance that you're not ruled by worry, fear, all the data can be arising, yet there's just, you know what to do. You just have access to skillful means, to insight and discernment, which is really what we want. And I, yeah, if the sensations of worry and anxiety come up, just to allow them to be as they are. It's just beneficial energy when I don't name it as anything. Yeah, so the taking responsibility, if we've made a commitment, having mastery of the data, then we're not distracted from upholding our commitments, saying, oh, I, it's too much, or I just need more sleep, that I can't get there on time because I need that extra five minutes of sleep, or just being distracted by all the events that occurred the night before. I mean, we really see how data limit us from being fully open and achieving the things we would really like to achieve. It's just in the emphasis on data. So having mastery comes about naturally, gradually. It, it is an option and the powerful four mainstays support us in allowing all data to be as it is. Because some are definitely challenging. We've been living our lives emphasizing some, replacing some, avoiding others. <clears throat> but had we been introduced to and been relying upon open intelligence for all of our life. We probably had glimpses of it from time to time and you know maybe it was called something else but what was looking when you were five years old when you looked in the mirror for the first time and you remember it has that changed that intelligence changed to precisely today. It's amazing your intelligence that about you that is stable, clear, this uh, nameless identity. You, you can't really name your intelligence. It's, it's always on, it's always available. So when we stop thinking, we come back to the introduction to open intelligence. And this is, allows us to really have mastery of all data streams. Physical pain is a good one. Um, yeah, through training up in open intelligence, we have, again, access to skillful means to take better care of ourselves also. It doesn't mean that we neglect, you know, saying, oh, it's just open intelligence, it's, I don't even know what it is. You know, you just instinctively know more and more what to do, to ask for help, to, you know, get a, different, a second opinion from a different doctor or whatever it might be, or maybe it means just, more rest. You know, a lot of us are so on the go, so busy that there isn't a lot of self-care. Or maybe it's the other way around, obsessive self-care, where that's our constant focus, which, you know, that can come up as well. So, like we heard earlier, a balanced view, a balanced perspective, knowing how to take care of ourselves, and then, then actually seeing how that naturally moves out to taking care of those around us, to many more people. Like if we really want to help many, many people, we move beyond all of the self-limiting ideas and see that we can do anything. 
And I, I'm really impressed and excited about what we do as a community around the world. I mean, it's no sh small feat that people are actually coming together and being able to work together every day, volunteering service and taking responsibility for data and really prioritizing a, a harmonious atmosphere where it comes naturally, where there is more connection and intimacy that we weren't even trying to be that way. The authenticity of open intelligence is, it just burns through any contrivance. That's another powerful aspect of the training, uncontrived open intelligence. It's not something you're contriving to be like somebody else. Your own open intelligence, your own power to be of great benefit. And that just is simply more and more enlivened. And for sure, yeah, there's the, the idea of an identity um, just becomes less and less important to try to make ourselves into somebody or something. Like, I mean, there is a lot of emphasis on being successful and some people really go for that and other people couldn't care less and they go the opposite way and just, you know, isolate and get really angry at those who are trying to make an image for themselves. And so, yeah, your only identity is open intelligence. That's what which is looking. All the other, you could change your clothes, your hairstyle, your you could learn a new language, but you're still essentially the same open intelligence. So then you can have fun with it, actually. You can create all kinds of avatars online and you can change your hairstyle, you can do everything. You can do whatever you want for the benefit of all. But really, yeah, the benefit of all is the key context. That's the natural movement and tendency. And for me, just showing up to these meetings, um, Every time I showed up, it just, there was more instinctive recognition of open intelligence, whether I got everything that was being shared or not. I mean, there are so many topics in human life that we could consider and so many philosophies and yeah, but what's our most fundamental, important aspect of just being of benefit to ourselves and others, of living a life of immediate and long-term benefit. And it's not complicated. The short moments are, it's the simplest thing to do. It doesn't always feel easy when the, the data are raging, but it's still like short moments of effortlessness or short moments of complete relaxation, short moments of resting naturally, short moments of allowing data to be just as it is. The more you practice that, the easier it is to let data be as it is. The things that I couldn't let be as they were in the beginning, now, through training up, I can. It's, it's not a stretch anymore. It just happens naturally. So I, I love the aspect of just showing up, so then you don't have to memorize a bunch of things and <clears throat> turn yourself into uh, anything else. And that, yeah, that's exciting to know that, you know, this is available for all the world's people, no matter what they're up to, no matter where they came from and what their IQ is or anything like that. So, so uniting and empowering.